Hi everyone. Uh, I hope you all enjoy playing the uh, Threshold Public Goods. So let me first give you an overview of what this this game is about. So in each round, each group member receives some amount of money. That's your initial endowment, and each player simultaneously chooses how much to contribute to a public good. Again, we call this the water purification project. What differentiates this experiment from the previous one is that the project will only proceed if the total contributions meet a threshold or the project's cost. Otherwise, everyone gets a refund. So this is primarily motivated by some of these discrete public goods. For instance, we want to build a bridge, and the bridge will cost $3 million. Uh, in the end, we raise two million. Well, we can't really build two thirds of a bridge, and so what, when that happens, we'll just refund everyone. And it turns out that this refund feature takes away some of the risks from voluntary contribution, and it changes the incentives. And so, what is your individual benefit from this project? Is the total project cost, which is the threshold? Times the rate of return. So here are the game parameters. We map you into groups of five, so you're all you're playing with four other players, and again, these will be robots. Uh, the threshold is set to be fifty dollars, and the rate of return is thirty percent. So each round you receive twenty dollars, and you have to decide how much to contribute and how much uh, to keep for your own private account. That will be your strategy. So what is your payoff? It depends on whether your group reaches the threshold or not. So it really depends on the total contributions. If you meet the target, you meet the threshold. You will everyone. The project will go on, and everyone will derive the benefit from the project. But the excess amount、uh, will be lost. In the other scenario, if there aren't enough to meet the threshold, so in other words, the contributions are insufficient, then everyone gets a refund. You simply start with、um, you're, you're back to the twenty dollars of tokens. So here's an example. So you start with twenty dollars. The project costs fifty, with a thirty percent rate of return. You contribute twelve, and your group in total meet the threshold exactly. So the total contribution is fifty. So the project will go on. What is your payoff? So your payoff is going to be your twenty dollars minus the twelve dollars you contributed to the group. And your return from this public project being built—it could be the bridge.、Um, so that's point three, which is the rate of return times the fifty dollars. So in total, that's twenty-three dollars. So let's take a look and see what happened in the experiment. So again, this is from your previous cohort. Everyone was in a threshold public goods game. And each player is endowed with twenty dollars or twenty ECU. It's a group of five, so you're matched with four other bots. The bot strategy is the fair share to reach the threshold plus a random number between minus three and three. So this is meant to add some noise. So what would be the fair share? That's the threshold, which is the target. Uh, divided by the group size. So, if the project costs fifty, the fair share would be fifty divided by five. So everybody should pay ten. If you look at what happened during the experiment, in the first round, the average、um, is actually ten. So that's the green line. And in rounds two to five. The average is actually a little bit higher than ten. This is because the robot strategy contains a noise of, you know, plus minus three. So people learn to contribute a little more to provide a buffer.、Um, this extra contribution actually is inefficient in this case because the if you exceed the threshold, it will be lost. 
So compared to the linear public goods experiment, you will see that the range of contributions, the interquartile range, is quite small. So which means that most people are actually contributing close to their fair share, plus a little buffer. So, you know, let's take a look and see what we have learned from this experiment. So in this case, theory also makes fairly precise predictions, assuming that everyone is selfish. So there is still a set of inefficient Nash equilibria, which means everyone contributes zero. But there's also a set of efficient Nash equilibria, where everyone contributes their fair share, so the sum of contributions exactly reaches the threshold. In the experiment data, we actually see that, you know, fair share seems to be a focal point. So uh, what have we learned from the data? We see that theory makes fairly good predictions on average. So most students contribute their fair share in round one. Um, that's a good focal point. They also learn to contribute a little more because of the noisy robot strategies. So you don't want the project to fell off because, you know, the robot happened to be drawing from a negative shock. And now the, you might be wondering, why do we include this experiment? This is to illustrate how a threshold can change the incentives to free ride. In a way, the refund clause essentially removes the risk from being the only contributor uh, or from being, you know, contributing a small amount that's not quite enough to build the public project or the public good. It is also useful because this basically builds a foundation for the field experiment which is coming up. So in the field experiment on a online microfinance website called kiva.org, we look at the incentives to join teams and the contribution behavior of Kiva lenders. It turns out that Kiva uses a threshold public good model to provide loans to low-income entrepreneurs in developing countries. And so the way the Kiva model works is, you know, an entrepreneur might need $2,000. So that's posted on the Kiva website. So in a one-month period, if the contributions from Kiva lenders do not meet the threshold, everyone gets a refund, and the entrepreneur does not get funded. If it meets the threshold, then the entrepreneur gets the loan and go, you know, would go ahead and you know, enlarge her current business or whatever she proposed to do. So this helps explain why um, so many Kiva projects have been successful. Uh, again, I'm going to analyze the data during office hours, so either log in, dial in to the office hours, or, you know, download the video afterwards. Thank you very much.